Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at approximating the binomial with the normal distribution so we can answer questions from exercise 3f. So it sounds difficult, there's lots of really big words in there, but really the process is not too bad. Let me show you how to do it. So, uh, when you have a, let's just have a quick look at the binomial distribution where you draw a graph of all of the probabilities. Now, let me just remind you some key features of the binomial distribution here. We have a set amount of experiments or, or probability experiments that we're going to complete, and we're looking for how many of those come out as successful when we only have two options. For example, flipping a head or a tail on a coin. Now, in this case here, we can only get whole number correct or, or successful trials. So it's not a smooth curve. It's built up of a series of bars where each bar is representing the probability of, th of that many successes coming true. So the middle bar here will be for three heads and four heads out of seven. The outer bars here will be worth two and five successful head flips. The slightly outer bars here will be for one and six successful head flips. And the last ones will be for zero successful head flips and seven successful head flips on the outer side there. So you can only get a whole number as your outcome. Therefore, it doesn't go in a continuous um, loop uh, because you can't get decimal numbers. So you can only use it for whole numbers. But the normal distribution, that works for continuous data. So discrete data, continuous data, big difference between the normal distribution. But as you can see, when the probability is about a half, they kind of form the same sort of shape. The value of n, the number of trials, must be large, however. You, you wouldn't use it for seven times flipping a coin. You'd use it for something like uh, where you've got more than 50 or more than 100 trials of an experiment uh, where you only have two outcomes of that experiment. And the probability must be close to 0 0.5, otherwise the normal the binomial distribution will be skewed onto one side, and we know that the normal distribution is perfectly symmetric. Okay. Okay, so it's really important going forward that you know that whenever you've got a binomial distribution and the n is large and the p is close to 0.5, then we can use uh, the normal distribution to approximate the um, binomial probabilities. Uh, so let's see how we do that conversion between binomial distribution and the, uh, and the normal distribution. So we're saying that the n value has to be 50 or more and the p-value has to be close to 0 0.5. Um, now let's have a look at the mean first of all. Uh, how do we get the mean and the standard deviation from this n and this p-value? Well, the way that we get the mean is um, we're doing 100 trials, and if it's close, to, and if it's with 0 0.5 probability that each trial is a success, then the average number of successes you're probably going to have is 45. So therefore, the formula that helps you work out the mean is equal to n multiplied by p. So it's pretty easy to work out the mean from uh, your n and your p-value. Now, it's slightly more difficult to work out the uh, standard deviation. Um, I could go for about 10 minutes in explaining how you get this calculation for the standard deviation, but I'm just going to give it to you instead. The calculation to work out the standard deviation is equal to the square root of n times p times 1 minus p, close bracket. Okay, so that's how we move from a binomial distribution to a normal distribution. It's with these conversions here. These conversions are really important. It's really important you remember them um, so that you can do the conversion between the binomial to the normal. The mean is equal to n times p. And the standard deviation is equal to np1 minus p, all square rooted. Let's have a go at a question here. Then a biased coin has the probability of turning up on a head as 0 0.53. Not that biased. Uh, the coin is tossed 100 times and the number of heads x is recorded. Uh, part A is write down a binomial model for x. Well, that's easy. That's uh, x is binomially distributed with a mean, so with a n value of 100, number of trials is 100, probability of 0.53. Part B, explain why x can be approximated using the normal distribution. Well, it can be used to approximate the normal distribution um, because n is high and p is close to 0.5.
And then part C here is find the value of mu and sigma for this approximation. So we're just going to be applying the formulas that are in the top right of the screen there. The mean is equal to n times p, that's going to be equal 53. And the standard deviation is going to be the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. So that's going to be 100 times 0.53 times 0.47, uh, which is equal to 4.99. Lovely. So there we are. That's how we work out the mean. And that's how we work out the standard deviation. And then naturally, in a question, questions will follow on from there. What's the probability of scoring less than 40 uh, heads on, uh, on this on this coin if it's flipped 100 times, you could work that out using this normal distribution here. Let's have a go at another question then. We have a binomial random variable which is x is, bi is norm binomially distributed with a number of trials of 150 and a probability of 0 0.48 uh, and is approximated by a normal random variable which is uh, normally just distributed with a mean of 72 and a standard deviation of 6.12. You could you could have worked those out for yourself, actually. Uh, part A is use this approximation to find uh, x is less than or equal to 70. So in this case here, we have to be a little bit careful when we convert from 70 as uh, the number of successful trials out of 150 into the normal distribution because what's happening here is we're moving from discrete data to continuous data. Now if we think about 70, if we've had 70 successes and we're thinking about what decimal values we can include here, we can include all the way up to 70.5, not including 70.5, and all the way down to 69.5. Now, if we're going for x is less than 70, then everything less than 70 is going to be fine. Um, so what we're actually going to do here is when we use the normal distribution, we're actually going to be going for 70.5 and less. Because 70 up anything up to 70.5 as a decimal would be approximated to 70 as 70 is the successful number of trials here. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to change from x being less than or equal to 70 to y being less than or less than 70.5. What this is called, it's called the continuity correction. And you'll hear me say that a lot of times. It just basically means how would we convert a discrete number of successes, a whole number of successes, into decimals um, where we include where we include all the decimals that would round to 70 um, as the number of successes. <clears throat> so the next thing we need to do then is just grab our calculator, uh, type in the uh, by, sorry, type in the normal mode, uh, go to normal CD, and then type in a mean of 72, standard deviation of 6.12, a lower limit of minus 999 or whatever your lower limit needs to be, an upper limit of 70.5, and you get an answer here of 0 0.4032. Just try that on your calculator just to make sure that we're on the right page here. Part B is also using your approximation to find the probability that x is in between 80 to 90. Now we're going to have to do again the continuity correction on here. We have to think about what decimals are going to be allowed in between 80 to 90, including 80, but not including 90. Now let's sort out the 80 first. The 80 could be from 79.5, um, or potentially up to 80.5, but we're going to go through that 80.5 into 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, not into 90. <clears throat> so what that will mean is that um, if we don't include 90, that means our decimal numbers can go up to 89.5, but not into 90 as the number of successful trials here. So our continuity correction is going to be in between 79.5, 
to 89.5. Hopefully that makes sense because 80, we're including 80 in the number of successful trials, so therefore that decimal can go down to 79.5. We're not including 90, so that we're only really including up to 89 successes, and that 89 will round up to 89.5, not including 89.5, um, but less than 89.5. So on our calculator then what we'll do is we'll use that uh, normal distribution CD mode, lower limit 79.5, upper limit 89.5, mean of 72, standard deviation of 6.12, try it on your calculator and make sure you get the same answer of 0 0.1081 on your calculator. Right then, next question. For a particular type of bulb, 55% will produce yellow flowers. A random sample of 80 bulbs are planted. Calculate the percentage error incurred when using a normal distribution to estimate the probability that exactly 50 yellow uh, flowers will, will flower yellow. Okay, so first of all, let's do the easy calculation, which is to calculate it on the binomial distribution using the binomial formula, or you could use your calculator as well. So in this case here, it's going to be n choose r, p to the power of r, 1 minus p, n minus r. That's a reminder from what the binomial formula is last year. So in this case here, it's going to be 80 bulbs planted in total, 50 we want to flower yellow, uh, equal times by p, which is the probability of them flowering, that's 0.55 to the power of the number of times we want those to flower, that's 50, and then the remainder, which is the failure rate, the probability of failure to the number of failures, and we get an answer there of 0 0.0365, and if you've got it on your calculator, I'd record the whole of that decimal uh, somewhere on your page. Now the next thing we need to do is to work out the normal approximation value and then we'll look at the difference between those two values. So in this case here we now need to convert from the binomial distribution into the normal distribution. So we need to work out the mean and the standard deviation to do that. So the mean here is going to be n times p and that gives us 44. The standard deviation we work out to be 4.45 da 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 da. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to approximate using the normal distribution the probability that exactly 50 yellow flowers will flower. Now in this case here we're going to have to do the continuity correction. Now what decimals uh, could we use to represent the value 50 on the number of successes? Well that decimal range there is going to be between 49.5 to 50.5. That's the decimal range. We could actually include the 49.5 here, but it's not really interesting to do so, and it's not really necessary for the normal distribution. So now we'll type this into the calculator on the normal CD mode. It's going to be 49.5 on the lower bounds, 50.5 on the upper bounds, and your two standard deviation and uh, mean that you've worked out previously. And we get 0.362 as our approximation value. So remember this is only an approximation, this here was actually the correct answer. Now to work out the percentage error, what we have to do there is we have to divide the difference by the correct value. So we'll work out the difference between these two answers here and then we'll divide it by the correct value which is this one here. So it's going to be the difference between these two values, which is 0 0.0003 divided by 0 0.0365 times by 100 because we want it as a percentage. And we get 0.82% error, which is not too bad, actually. Uh, when we're approximating things to have an error rate of less than 1%, that's pretty good going. Okay, so hopefully that question makes sense. Uh, the first thing we did was we worked out the binomial distribution probability. Then we worked out the normal distribution probability. In this question here, we had to work out the mean and the standard deviation uh, before we worked out the normal distribution answer. Okay then, so time for you to have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and try this one out.
Right, okay then, so in this question then, a company sells orchids of which 45% produce pink flowers. A random sample of 20 orchids is taken and X produce pink flowers. Find the probability that X is equal to 10. So in this case here, um, it's only got a trial of 20, a sample of 20. We're not going to be able to approximate to the normal distribution for this question here. We really need N to be more than 50. Uh, so what we're going to have to do then is use the standard binomial mode on our calculator. Now it's the binomial PD mode because we're working out a, an exact number of successes equal to 10. That's 10 out of 20, so n here is 20, and the probability of success is 0.45. So the answer to this question then is 0.1593. Lovely, there we are. Uh, a second sample of 240 orchids is taken. Using a suitable approximation, find the probability that fewer than 110 orchids produce pink flowers. Well, in this question already, um, we need to work out what the mean is going to be and the standard deviation is going to be. So for the mean, it's going to be n times p. So that's going to be 240 times 0.45. And I'll grab my calculator, 240 times 0 0.45, and that gives me 108. So 108 is the mean, and the standard deviation is going to be 240 times 0 0.45 times 0 0.55, and all of that will be square rooted. So answer times 0 0.55, and then square root answer, and we get 7.5. 7071. Okay, now we want fewer than 110 orchids to produce pink flowers. Now, when we consider the continuity correction here, it's going to be from 109.5 downwards. Reason being is that we don't want, we want fewer than 110, so that means uh, from 109. Point 109 downwards, and rounding that up to include all the decimals there, um, it's going to be 109.5 downwards. So on our calculator then, let's type in an upper bound of 109.5, standard deviation of 7.7071, and a mean of 108. And the answer to this problem here is 0 0.5772. Okay, there we are. And for the last part, question C here, the probability that at least Q orchids produce pink flowers is 0.2. So let's visualise this problem first. We have our normal distribution here. We want at least Q orchids produce pink flowers is 0.2. So what we're looking for here is this marker here, where this area is equal to 0.2, or as close to 0.2 as possible. We have 108 as the mean standard deviation of 7.7. Uh, .7. So what we're looking to use then is the inverse normal mode. Now bear in mind we're going to have to do a continuity correction at some point here. Um, what we're looking for here is the probability that um, x is more than or equal to q being 0.2 so in this case here, we want the probability of y, where it's the normal distribution now, to be um, bigger than q minus 0 0.5, because we have to we have to go down, because we want to include q in our um, number of potential successes, number of potential um, orchids uh, flowering, pink flowers. So this is going to equal 0 0.2, so let's use the inverse normal mode on the calculator. Remember that we're going to have to use the 0 0.8 probability that is to the left with our mean and standard deviation. And we get here that Q minus 0 0.5 is going to be equal to 114.486. Adding on 0 0.5 there, Q there is going to be 114.986. So therefore Q must have to round it to 115. So therefore, um, we need at least 115 orchids to produce pink flowers out of 240. The probability that that will happen is 0 0.2. All right, then, there we are. That's the answer to this, this uh, question here. Then have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 3F, particularly those problem-solving ones, the exam-style questions. And thanks very much for watching.